What's up everyone, I'm Chirag and welcome to part 12 of the tutorial series on AWS HTTP API. So guys, in this tutorial, I will take you through on how to configure or use Lambda Authorizer to secure our API endpoints. So guys, while we configure Lambda Authorizer, we basically get two options for the response mode that is simple and the IAM policy. So let's quickly have a look at that. So I will open API gateway, I will click on authorization, I will select any uh, method and I will say create and attach an authorizer. So here within authorizer type, as we know that this tutorial is based on Lambda authorizer. So we are going to select the Lambda over here. And if we scroll down, then here you will be able to see the response mode. So here we have two options that is simple and the IAM policy. So basically in this video, we will look at the simple response mode, uh, which will return a Boolean value for the given user that he or she is authorized to access the said resource or not. And if we talk about the IAM policy, then that is something we will cover in the upcoming tutorial. Correct. So guys, now before we start with the practical implementation, let's have a look at the workflow. So guys, as you can see on my screen here, I have two workflow. So the one workflow is without Lambda authorizer configured and the another workflow is with Lambda authorizer configured. So while we don't have the Lambda authorizer configured, the workflow or the invocation steps are pretty straightforward. So here we have the postman that we use to invoke or test the API endpoint. And once we configure the invocation details, we basically invoke the API and the request is being sent to the Amazon API gateway. And once the request is passed over there, the appropriate backend integration gets invoked or executed. So in my case, it's Lambda function. So basically Lambda function gets executed and the appropriate response is sent back to the Amazon API gateway. And from there, the response is being sent back to the client. So this is the very simple workflow without Lambda authorization. So now let's have a look at the workflow with the Lambda authorizations configured. So here again, we have the postman, we configure the details for the invocation. And while we configure the details for the invocation, we are going to also pass the authorization header as a part of the header. So we will define authorization as the key and the secret token as a value. And once we configure that, the request is being sent to Amazon API Gateway. Now as a second step, it's not going to directly execute the backend integration, but instead what it will do is it will check whether the SAID user is authorized to invoke or access the SAID resource or not, right? So the request would be uh, passed on to the Lambda authorizer. Here uh, it will validate the authorization header. So it will check whether the secret token that is being passed uh, is valid or not. If it is valid, then it will return uh, this response that is, is authorized as true. And apart from that, if you want to pass any additional parameter, then you can pass that parameters as a part of the context. And uh, for example, if Lambda authorizer found that secret token is invalid, then what it will do is it will return is authorized as false. And again, if you want to pass any additional parameters as a part of the context, then you can define over here, correct? Now, for example, uh, if we don't pass the authorization header, then what it will do is it's going to return is authorized as false. It means that the SAID user is not authorized to invoke the uh, SAID resource that he or she is trying to invoke, correct? Now, let's say for example, uh, the Lambda authorizer return is authorized as true. It means the SAID user is authorized to access or execute that resource. And as a next step, the Amazon API gateway is going to invoke or execute the backend integration that is Lambda function. And once that is executed, the appropriate response is sent back to the API gateway. And from there, the response is sent back to the client. Now let's say for example, the Lambda authorizer found the secret token as invalid and it written is authorized as false. Now, as we see that is authorized as false, then the API gateway is not going to execute the uh, backend integration or the Lambda function. That is the third step. Instead, it will return the uh, error code saying forbidden or unauthorized, right? So now let's get started with the practical implementation. So what we are going to do is we are going to click on services. We will navigate to Lambda management console because we need to create the Lambda function for the authorizer. So we will say create function and we will give the function name. I will say Lambda auth, something like this. And I will select runtime as Python 3.8. I will choose the permission as the use an existing role. I will say Lambda hyphen API gateway role and I will say create function. 
Now, once the function is created here, we need to write a code that will reflect the or that will return the Boolean response that whether the given user is authorized or not. But we will uh, configure this code at later point of time. Now, let's go back to the API gateway and we will click on routes over here. So now let's say I want to authorize or set up the authorization for the get method under slash test resource. So as you can see here, we already have the IAM built in configured. So we are going to remove this. So this we have configured as a part of the previous tutorial. And once you remove that, so click on that method and here we will say create and attach an authorizer. Now within authorizer type, we will select Lambda function, give the authorizer name. I will say lamb auth. And after that, uh, the region is US East one. We will select the Lambda function that we have just created. So I'm going to copy this Lambda function name and paste it over here. Select that Lambda function. Now within payload format version, we are going to select 2.0. We don't want to select the legacy one that is 1.0. So we are going to move on with the latest uh, payload format version that is 2.0 response mode. As we just uh, discussed earlier that we are going to select simple. We are going to disable the authorizer caching. We don't want to cache that. And then we have identity sources. So here, as we can see here, we have some value saying dollar request dot header dot authorization. So it's asking that, uh, what would be the key that uh, you will be passing for the secret token, right? So we will say in the header that key is authorization and value is secret token. Now, for example, you, if you want to pass the key as authorization token and its value should be secret token, then you need to modify this. So you need to mention over here, something like this, that is authorization token. So now in the header, you need to pass the key as authorization token and the value as the secret token. Okay. Uh, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we will leave it as it is. Now, apart from authorization, if you want to add any other identity source, then you can click on add identity source and add it over here. But for now, we will leave it as it is. And then we have invoke permission. So this basically grants the permission to invoke the Lambda function that is Lambda auth that we have just created. Okay. So you need to make sure that it's enabled. And finally, once everything is configured, click on create and attach. Now here we have successfully configured the Lambda authorizer. Now as a next step, we are going to deploy this to the custom stage. So say deploy, I will select version one that is manual deployment and I will say deploy to stage. Now from the API endpoint perspective, we have configured everything that is required. Now we will move back to the Lambda function. So here we need to decide, we need to validate the secret token. So if the secret token is valid, then only uh, we will allow that user to invoke the seed resource. Okay. So what we are going to do is here within to do implement within Lambda underscore handler, we will say if event of headers. So we are going to look for headers. Within headers, what we are going to look at, we are going to look at authorization. Now, for example, if we look one more time over here, so I'm going to say edit authorizer. Now, if we have passed here authorization token, then what we need to do is in the code, we need to look for the authorization token, right? But in my case, I have kept it authorization. So that's the reason I'm going to mention authorization over here. Okay. Now within authorization, we will get the secret code. Now I will compare the value. So the secret value should be secret code, something like this, or it can be anything. Make sure you pass this as a part of the environment variable and you use the KMS to encrypt this environment variable because secret code or secret token should not be visible like this and it should be fetched at the runtime. Now here we are checking that if authorization is double equal to secret code, then we want to allow that user. So we will say response equal to curly braces. And here we will say is into double quotes is authorized true. So if the secret code is matching, then we will authorize this user. And apart from that, if you want to pass any additional parameters, so we will say context or dictionary, any other param and its value. Okay. So this is basically for the authorized user. And then we will say else if the condition is false, 
then we will say is authorized as false okay and within the if condition we will say return response similarly in the else part we will say return response and we will remove the default return statement now once this is configured click on deploy now if everything is uh, configured correctly then our invocation should work as expected now as a next step we are going to test this API endpoint. So I'm going to open Postman. And in the meantime, I'm going to navigate to stages with an API gateway to copy the invocation URL. Here it is copy. I will open a new tab. I will say paste it over here. And I want to invoke the test resource. And the method is get. So at this point of time, we are not going to pass any headers or any other thing. So we will simply say send and it should return unauthorized. As you can see, the status code is 401 unauthorized because here the condition is evaluated to false because we have not passed any authorization header. Now let's pass the authorization header. Authorization and the secret key is secret code. Okay, I will say send. Now, as you can see, it returns status code 200 uh, because this condition evaluated to true and it returned the response saying that this user is authorized as a value true, correct? Now, if I pass any other value apart from secret code and if I say send, then it's going to say forbidden 403. So guys, this is how you can secure your API endpoints uh, using Lambda authorizer with simple response mode, correct? So guys, that's all I wanted to cover in this tutorial. Until that time, if you want me to do tutorial on any use case or service, then please leave them below and I will try my best to come up with the tutorial as soon as possible. And if you have any queries or comments, then again, please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time.